do million years ago when dinosaurs roamed the earth. You're about to meet one of these living fossils, a link to the creatures from the past. There are 27 different species of crocodilian found around the world. From alligators to gharials, from caimans to your true croc. They are the world's most perfect and unchanged predator. They survive challenges and eras where so many others have failed. But most impressive of all is Australia's apex predator, the animal that towers above all other species of reptile. Then here to tell you all about it, we have Jimmy. Please make up and welcome. It's the Australia's Air Crop Team. Thanks, Crystal. Thanks, Neilis. Guys, welcome to the best part of the day. We've got the feeding of the saltwater crop for you. And today, with Monty the crop cell, we're going to show you just how awesome this species is, but also how to live safely alongside them in the, um, around our northern waterways. Now, Ty, he's going to be feeding today as well. He's making the ultimate mistake, or one of them. He's mucking around way too close to the water's edge. Even me standing here, Monty can feel exactly where I am and where Ty is. By the vibrations our footsteps are sending out. He can pick up on that, he's got all these little pressure receptors that hone in on animals as small as a bandicoot coming down to the water's edge. Now, the biggest mistake people make in crop territory is this. They go down into the water, either to have a fish or have a bit of a paddle or a swim in the hot Queensland or Northern Territory sun, not knowing that there's a large crocodile approaching them. Take note, not a ripple, not a bubble. If this was deep, dark, murky water, you'd have absolutely no idea he was there. This is the way they operate on stealth. And now he's that close, you can have a crack, mate. Cheers, mate. Monty's setting up here, we'll see what he wants to do today. It's pretty warm. Come in, come. You can come out nice and slow. Give it up for him, guys. That was incredibly gentle from Monty, but you can see as soon as Jimmy gets back in the water, he can't help himself. He's got to chase Jimmy out of his territory. Yeah, exactly right, mate. They can't stand anything being in their water. Out of the 27 species of crocodilian on the planet, by far and without a doubt, the most territorial. So I'm going to try and get him to put a hit on his creek right here. Once again, the unseen predator. You have no idea he was there until now. Come on, mate. What? <laughs> Bit of a swish of the tail there. Now, it's, it's winter time at the moment, guys, so he's not firing <gasps> on all cylinders. But if this was summertime, without a doubt, one flick of that tail, he hits this fence in one go. Now, that is in, in itself impressive, but why we get nervous, especially on this creek line, is his jaw pressure. If he was to corner us and get us and uh, grab, a, grab a bit, he has 3,000 pounds per square inch closing pressure at the back of his mouth. Car crushes at the tip. They have 2,500 PSI and they crush a car into a little cube. He's got more than that in his mouth. So if he grabs a pig on the head or a kangaroo, it is all over by the shouting. Now, you've seen a couple of half decent strikes from the water's edge, but there is another place where salties can catch themselves some that evening. Yeah, and that's up here on the tail of the guys. So this is a natural behaviour that these guys do use out in the wild. <clears throat> now, when crocodiles first hatch out the egg, we're 12 to 15 centimetres long, and pretty much everything out in the wild wants to eat one. So what these baby crocodiles do is they hang around the edges of billabongs and the waterways that they call home. They're hiding in amongst the vegetation around the edge of those waterways. And what they're doing is they're waiting for anything to land above them. You can see Monty's pretty well set up there. And once again, he's going to use his tail to propel himself, just like with the first two strikes we've seen. He's telling me to hurry up and stop talking. He's getting all that power to launch up and down in the water with his tail. So, we'll see him up again. Give it up for it, guys. Now, you did hear that little jaw pop there. That's that um, bite pressure that Jimmy was talking about. We'll see if we can get him to do another one. It may be a bit more of a jaw pop. But the reason why we show you this is because from the time they hatch out the egg, as we're saying, they'll use this all the way up to Monty's size and even bigger. And people have been taken by tail walking crocodiles. So if you are up in Northern Australia, in croc country, please do not sit out on those Melaleuca branches dangling your legs off the end or an undercut bank or anything like that because there could be a crocodile sitting there waiting for you. 
Nice work, mate. Good feet. I'll see if you can't get him onto me. Come on, Monty. Come over here for this last section. Nice. Yeah, you'll be made to come round. So, guys, what we want to try and show you now, and Monty's a pretty big croc, so we'll see if we can't get him out for one last hit and show you just how fast a croc that's big enough to think of us as food can run on the hard, solid ground. So, everyone's got an uncle tell you they can run as fast as a horse or chase you down on your motorbike. That's the case, man, Tyrion, well to hurt. Come on, mate. Wow. Now, yeah, he's coming out nice and slow today, but now that the big fella's out, that's flat out. Wow. I missed that, mate. Oh, no, good, he got it. I was going to ask you to grab it for me. <laughs> now, but check him out now that he's here. What an awesome animal to see from where you guys are. But you can get a real good idea of why he's not made to chase me and tie down on the hard, solid ground. Tiny little legs and a big round belly, that tail that can propel him the cruising speed of a dolphin for short bursts in the water, drags behind him on land like a big old handbrake. So in the water, dynamite, out on land, at the water, yeah, out on land, very, very slow and cumbersome once they get to this size. I'll even put my money where my mouth is and uh, sit down. In front of the big fella. Maybe even lay, lay down in front of Monty. And he's making no attempt to come get me whatsoever. But if I start mucking around closer to his water and get further away from him, he does nothing. He turned his head there a little bit. He can't help it. He knows I'm here. The splashing, there we go. That's enough to get his attention. Look, get out. <laughs> yeah. So this animal at the water's edge and in the water, so dangerous guys, 60 million years unchanged to be the ultimate aquatic ambush predator. So the few simple rules that me and Ty have broken today is all you have to follow to stay safe in crop territory. Please stay four to five metres back from the water's edge. That'll keep you out of his strike range and even the biggest salties that have ever existed. Don't overhang the water like Ty showed us and whatever you do, when you're up in Northern Australia where there's crocs found, don't go swimming with it. That's the rule that most people break. And don't get confused by the name saltwater crocodile. This animal loves living in fresh water too. If they're just called that, they've got an advanced salt excretion gland. They live in the ocean, fresh water, brackish water, you name it. Also, this animal can hold its breath for seven hours at a time. So don't go down to the water thinking that you haven't seen one for two hours and it's safe to swim. It's not seven hours at a time. And alcohol, guys, alcohol plays a huge role on croc attacks on people. Someone goes down to the water, they have a carton of beer, they think they're 10 foot tall and bulletproof, and then tragedy happens. Now, it is an absolute tragedy where human life is affected by a negative interaction with this animal for everyone involved, but then crocodiles suffer too. As soon as there's an attack, Certain pollies, the media, they jump on a bandwagon, they call for culls and removing these animals from the ecosystem. All that does is provide a false sense of security and degrade our ecosystems non-stop. This is the keystone species. If you love fishing for barramundi, if you love heading up north and loving an, like an environment where there's so much life, this is the animal that makes that happen. They are so important for our northern waterways. And guys, we don't expect everyone to go away loving crocodiles like we do. Me and Ty, the team, we get to work with them every single day. But if you can go away with just a little bit more appreciation for them, that's all we can ask. Now, Steve-O, up there on the big screen, he loved crocodiles with everything he had. Obviously, that's no secret to anyone. And he passed that passion on to everyone here at the zoo. So with that in mind, thank you very much for coming here today, helping us keep Steve's dream and this planet alive. Safe trip home, guys. Cheers. My dad taught me from a very early age. Being one with this thing.